What is going on, everyone? Welcome to episode 22 of Little Root Lessons. As always, I'm your host, Carter Noble, joined by our fantastic co-host, Carl Wilkin. What's up, man? We had our first little grassroots tournament this past... I'd, I'd call it past weekend. It was like on a Saturday. It was just a one-day, one day, one day two-hour event. Uh, the Little Root Rumble. Um, had a pretty good show out. Uh, had at least eight people, which was double what we had when we when I posted out about it when we started because we were at four. <laughs> yeah. Um, we had a couple rain teams, a couple like mid rangey teams. There was a couple gimmick teams. It was kind of cute. There's a there's a lot going on here. Um, I know there was uh, at least one Cinderace coaching team. Uh, mine Chow Titar Durant team. Uh, Evan was playing Trick Room Lorantis. What? What does Lorantis even do? It gets contrary. And super. So power. It, oh oh okay. And tickle, and tickle does a really cool thing. To it. To it, yeah. So it just is bulk up. Yeah. So it's, it's prankster. It's, it's prankster yeah, up. yeah, it's just prankster coaching. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's real. But, <laughs> but you can debuff your opponents. That's cute. Um, and then there was um, two rain teams. One both took top places. Uh, I was second, and then Chasing was first. Uh, pretty much four of the same mons, and then both had a fire mon, both had a redirection mon. Yeah. And that's where we kind of ventured and like, off. The, the worst part is, is like, uh, so you both had the Kendra, Politoed, and Porygon Por- 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 Z with Z. your... Oh, oh, yeah, poor gone too, my bad. Uh, with your Trick Room Abuser being Excavalier. Yep. Uh, the difference is, and these are both ones that you've played with in, on this team. Yeah, I played, with all, I, <laughs> I played with all four of these ones at some point, so. Was Mar- uh, Alolan Marowak and Amoongus yep. compared to your... Togekiss and Incineroar. Yep. So, um, Chasing was your only loss, yep. correct? Yep. And he ended up going 3 0. Uh, yeah, he ended up going 5 0. Five of you all played I'm five saying, matches. We played five matches, yeah. Man, sweet. So I, he played five. We all played five matches. I went four one. He went five zero, oh, and then Jiggly was the next one down at three two. Hey, good enough, man. So obviously smaller in tournament, but if there's there's enough support for like like enough interest in this, then like by we, all we means we can keep doing this. Basically, for like a sure, monthly for thing sure. for sure. And like you know, if we get big enough, there will be surprise support. Like yep. I offered surprise support for this one. We did need to hit to 10, and we didn't get to 10. We got to 8, so we were close. So close. Uh, but if we can make this like a monthly thing, we can probably get some prize support figured out and hopefully do more of these, because th- this was all this was a blast. Uh, it took like two hours. Yeah, to what's play. even better is it was all on Showdown, too. So yeah, like, super fast. That was something that uh, you kind of advertised it by. It's just like, look... This is not Showdown. There's no excuse to not have a team come like, play. It's super <laughs> fast. It's like, Showdown, like, you can just copy-paste the team. I don't care where you get your team from. Just come play. Just yeah. come play. All you gotta do is come play. You just gotta show up. Uh, but we'll go into top the top two teams there, because they're both super similar, and we'll talk about the differences about that here in a little bit. Um, we also have uh, Players' Cup uh, data for Week 2, and we get to look at that. Because by the time we recorded last week's episode, this what the the week one data wasn't out yet. Yeah. So we're lucky now, as of recording of it, now they were recording this episode. Week two's data came out with the differential from week one. So it basically covers all week of one data. So we got also, we have a lot yeah. to talk about for this one. Yeah. This is probably going to be like twenty minutes of our episode this week, and then to start off everything in depth wise, we have. Team of the week. Team of the week from new member. Uh, it's either Knight Rider or Snight Rider, however you want to pronounce it. I'm going with Knight Rider because that sounds more logical. Okay. But if I'm wrong, I'm going to get a hasty email or text message. You're going to get plagued in Discord like you get about the P.O. boxes. <laughs> the number of people that message me about that. It's good that they're listening, though. It shows that they go all the way to the end. And the the best part is, is my response to every single one of them is, as soon as it starts paying me enough to go get it. <laughs> yep. Um, so, Team of the Week here, uh, Knight Rider. Uh, it is kind of a trick room team with a couple fast modes. Uh, with a couple fast mons, not really a fast mode, but a couple fast mons. 
Um, trick Room Abuser here is Dragalgi. Our Trick Room Setter is Dusclops. We have Galarian Weezing as a just like turn off abilities button if we need it. it also has Taunt. Um, and then this is where it gets a little bit weird. We're running G-Max Blastoise. Okay. Uh, Volcarona with Wide Lens. Okay. And then Focus S Urshifu, which I'm assuming is the Dark Urshifu. This is pretty common at this point. Focus S, yeah, Max it has, Max, Max Speed. It has Wicked Blow there, so we if it's not, we have a problem. We're not going to dive too much into Urshifu on this team, because that's pretty pretty standard Urshifu set. Yeah, uh, But the rest of these are ones we don't normally see, except for, like, Weezing Galar. We talked about Weezing last week. The, so... I've come to the conclusion that you have to have a soft spot for Weezing, and that's why you keep picking it for Team of the Week stuff. I think this one specifically for Dragali. <laughs> I want to talk about Dragali because Dragali is great. to sneak in the Weezing in there. Yeah, and then Weezing just happened to be attached and comes and came along for the ride. Because I'm pretty sure we've talked about Weezing three or four weeks in a row now. <laughs> uh, we've talked about it at least four times. I don't know about if they're all in a row, but at least four times. It's it's getting up there with like PZ numbers. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Dragalgi, uh, for many people who may not know, uh, the ability is adaptability, which stab is then two times instead of one point five. It is real powerful. And the fact that you have two types that uh, one is powerful against your one of your main weaknesses, which is fairy types. So you just remove a weakness there, and then your dragon type moves are stronger against other dragons. And more importantly. Um, not, not only are they, like, are you able to deal with fairies with your, uh, Max Ooze, but Max Ooze also just boosts your special deck, which yep. is real powerful. Um, we're also able to set rain uh, with Hydro Pump in this case. Um, I run Scald on mine. I, I, uh, have Dragalgi in Draft League, and I currently have, have, uh, Scald on it. Uh, there was an instance this week where, uh, playing against EB... That they had Golork and Toxapex as like Trick Room counters, and so I, I seriously debated for like two or three days. I'm like, all right, do I want Skull for the Golork, or do I want Thunder for the the Toxapex? That's the problem. Because Galgi like, has a four, <laughs> has fourth move syndrome because you want protect. Oh yeah, you, you so definitely you, want protect. You have Dragon move, Poison move, which is usually Draco Meteor Sludge Bomb, and then it's like, do I run Hydro Pump Scald or do I run Thunder Thunderbolt? And that's kind of where you're at. Um, usually you want to run the Scald Hydro Pump because it covers ground type, which is a big weakness for you. Um, but whereas Thunderbolt doesn't really doesn't hit the ground types, which you're not really worried about. Um, the the big thing there is like Thunder, Thunderbolt is good against the bulky waters, which you could have a problem with otherwise um, outside of like triggering your policy and just going over the top of them. Yeah. So like... There, there's definitely a give and take of like what you want to be doing with your Dragalgi. Um, but like I said, right now I'm a big proponent of using Scald on it. Um, just because like your your damage between uh, Max U, uh, your, your difference between like Max Geysers isn't significant. I think it's uh, 110 versus 130. Is that right? Uh, I believe it's pretty close. It's either 110 and 130 or 130 and 150. I don't I don't think Hydro Pump gets to 150. We'll find out here in a second. Keep talking. But um, the big thing there is, like, you have the ability to, like, manipulate weather if you need be. But, like, uh, the, like weather is cool, but, like... 140. Hydro Pump is 140. Oh, okay. So is it is called 110 or 120? Scald is... Probably 110. So, like, the, the big thing that, like, it comes down to me is, like, rain is... So it's 10 points. Oh, okay. So, super negligible. Yeah. But outside of Dynamaxing... Uh, it's actually not... Yeah, Scald is more reliable because you don't have that 30% chance to miss, and you have a chance to burn, which can also be really impactful. Whereas but, Hydro Pump means you just get to go over the top of most mons. Yeah. That so... That, that's the thing, is like outside of Dynamaxing, Hydro Pump is significantly more powerful, but you have that chance to miss. So, yep. um, but like coming back to Scald versus Thunder or Thunderbolt or, you know, Water Move versus Electric Move, um, Rain is really popular right now. Like, Rain seems to be the best weather. Um, but you need to be able to counter Tyranitar, which can be a problem for you. So, having that Water Move for Tyranitar is really good. 
Uh, whereas, like, Max Wormwind is also okay against because you're lowering its attack while also not triggering its policy. So, like, there's, there's give and take there as well. Um, but Thunderbolt also allows you to manipulate terrain, which is, again, super important in this, in this format right now with all the Rillabooms running around. The big thing there is, like, you're not changing the terrain before Rillaboom gets its grassy glide off. Yeah. Because that plus one priority, you just aren't able to ever have priority over Rillaboom. Yeah. So there's there's definitely... it. it Dragalgi definitely feels like one of those mods that just has four move syndrome, where it just like... It wants to do a lot, and it can't do all of it. So you have to pick which one you want to do. Uh, moving on with the rest of the team, Dust Claps is our Trick Room Setter and our Weakness Policy Triggerer. Um, trick Room, Pain Split, Bulldoze, Ally Switch, the ever scary move. Everyone on Discord hates this move for the most part. There's a couple people, like, oh. a lot of the newer people are like accepting of it. A lot of the veteran players that we've had on here for a while are just like, I am, I am kill this move. <laughs> I am definitely coming around to playing with it more and therefore... Like, when, when I... Okay, so I think Ally Switch should not have priority. Uh, is is the, the way I would fix Ally Switch. Like, if if you take away the priority boost to Ally Switch, I think it is a much more balanced move, but it's not... There are instances where it can still be playable, but not overbearingly so like it is now. Um, the big thing about Ally Switch is, like, it makes me feel so smart. When I do it right, <laughs> like if I'm on if I'm on the playing side and I predict correctly and get the ally switch off because they don't know about it, that just makes me feel so good. But on the other side, like if I play around ally switch and I actually call it per, uh, like correctly, it also just makes me feel insanely good. The downside of that is you feel so bad if you like playing against it. Yeah, playing playing with it, and you like if you're just clicking it to click it, like there, I feel like there is a correct way to play Ally Switch, and I, this is something I've kind of talked about in my draft league videos. It's like, you know, you like last week when I played with Minetric, like I had, I had um, Ally Switch on Clink Clink, and I said in my intro that Minetric's job is to come in, pick up one KO, and that's his job. Problem is, is the way I built Minetric, it wasn't the fastest thing on the field. So being able to make it where my opponent is incorrectly attacking into a Mon, so I can then secure a KO, makes me feel better about myself because I'm actually able to get my my KO off before they are able to knock out my Pokemon. Mm -hmm. So I, I think there's a place for Ally Switch. It's currently at plus two. And plus two priority is really weird. It's really awkward because it's like you you still get hit by fake out, which is whatever. I don't really care. But you're faster than all the priority moves. So maybe maybe even just going down to plus one priority or zero. Um, plus one means it's still definitely playable and you still get hit by the mons that are faster than you mm -hmm. with priority moves. Um the other thing is, like, there's some play against Ally Switch anyway. Uh, if you just... If you know that your opponent has it, it's a big old mind game most of the time, but if you can accurately predict when Ally Switch is going to happen, which good players tend to do anyway, uh, I have definitely noticed that, like, when I watch James ba uh, James Beck or, uh, like, Wolfie play against Ally Switch, they're usually correct on when their opponent's going to need to do it, because it's kind of a given, like, you have to ally switch here or this mon gets KO'd. Yeah. And, they accurately and, and that's, that. that's exactly what I'm saying, you know? You, uh, like, playing with it is like, all right, I need this thing to do exactly its one thing. It, it has one job this game, and I need that to happen. Ally switch is the only way I see this actually going well for me. And that's the reason, like, I think it's playable. And, and that's the thing is, like, playing on ladder, I think too many people play it incorrectly. And that's why people are frustrated with it. Probably. It's just like, all right, well, they clicked ally switch 12 times in, in you know, 13 turns. They just turns. spammed it. And it's like, all right, well, I know you're going to go for it every turn. I'm just going to attack into a slot and hope I 
cor- you know, correctly call it. Yeah, hope hope that the this tenth time isn't the time you hit it. Yeah, and like that that's the thing is I I definitely used to be in the ballpark of Alice, which is awful. Why does this move even exist? The more I've played with it and more I've played against it, the more I've learned to appreciate what it can do for a Pokemon. Yeah. So. Uh, I've always been in the camp that it's fine. It's a fine move to play with. Uh, it's in the game. You might as well abuse it. Um, same thing for, like, all the other priority moves. I feel like if it was at plus one, it's probably fine. Um, then again, uh, it gets a little weird, like, ally switch and, fo- like, follow me goes before ally switch. So you could, like, redirect, and I don't know how like how that would work. So having it all in the same lane of all the redirection is probably fine, too. At plus two, it's probably fine. Like, it's, it's plus two anyway, and it's just, like, it's fine. In my, it's in my opinion. Um, I know everyone else is, like, down with ally switch. Don't use it. Don't play with it. Um, but in the end, it's in the game. People are going to play with it if they can. Uh, I'm using it on Comfy and dra- in Draft League. It's it's just a move to have. Comfy gets it, and it's very fast. I have it on Gardevoir and Kling Kling. Yep. So this is like, these are mons that are meant to be support mons and are here to do exactly one thing. Let my other Pokemon get a KO. Yep. Uh, next mon, uh, Weezing. This one is not an Assault Vest variant. This is a more supporting Weezing, which is what I'm expecting Weezing to do most of the time anyway. Yep. Uh, Black Sludge, Neutralizing Gas... Uh, fairly bulky with a little bit of speed. Uh, Strange Steam, Sledge Bomb, Taunt, and Protect. This is pretty much our come in, throw Taunt out, and then try to deal some damage before you get blown up by other mons. So, interesting thing, uh, specifically with Weezing here. Um, like, in f- in the face of Urshifu, your opponent can freely click Protect, which then allows you to switch out your Weezing to let your unseen fist actually do its thing. So like you can, there's a mind game there. Yeah. Where hey, it's okay. I know how this works. I can't I can't hit you if you use protect. But if you go for protect, then there's a chance you just wasted your turn and yep. you still get KO'd. So, it's <laughs> it's one of those things. Yeah. You're, you know, you're getting hit if you don't do it, but you're getting hit if you do. So, yeah. Um, next mon is G-Max Blastoise with Life Orb Torrent, which is pretty standard for most Blastoises. Rain Dish isn't usually worth running. Yeah! Uh, also fairly bulky with Max Special Attack. Um, Scald, Water Spout, Ice Beam, and Fake Out. No Protect on our Life Orb mon feels a little odd. It does. Um, fake Out plus Life Orb seems kind of odd, too. Yeah. Like, I, I understand you want the the protection here. Like, having that fake-out support is definitely helpful, especially, like, if we're trying to set up Trick Room, we have fake-out from Blastoise, we have Rage Powder from Volcarona. Like, there's two forms of, re- well, disruption slash redirection to allow you to be able to set up your Trick Room. So, I understand the idea behind it. I don't know if I agree with Life Orb plus fake-out. Uh, nobody has Vest, so you could, like... Yeah, just slap a vest on this you thing. You slap vest on this version and probably be fine. But um, at the same time, if this is your big Dynamax target outside of Dragalgi, then Life Orb makes sense. Yeah. Uh, but if that's the case, I don't know if you want Fake Out. Exactly. That's kind of like, if this is your if this is one of your Dynamax targets, then you probably want to run the Shell Smash version, and from there, just... <sighs> you could also... Uh, you could also pull the Rillaboom card and Choice Band people, and just well, or in this case Choice Specs people, and just hit them turbo hard. Like granted, then you're not Dynamaxing, which feels worse for your G Max Blastoise. But that is that's that's something I've I've seen a lot of here lately. Is Choice Band Rillaboom, and holy cow, does that thing hit like a truck! Um, I think I think Rillaboom is a reason not to play Blastoise right now, actually. Yeah. Like the, Rillaboom the is I, a reason most bulky waters aren't in the game anyway. Uh, it's it's a, it's a good check to Rain. That's why Rain hasn't completely taken over the format because Rillaboom's around. 
but yeah, this Blastoise either like get protect on it somewhere so you can maximize the value of having life orb and being able to keep yourself alive longer and not just take all the damage in the world or maybe swap your item for an assault vest and be bulky with max special attack and like run these four moves and be fine. I'm, I'm fine with literally either of those outcomes. Yes. Uh, Vocal Rona with Wide Lens. Um, Is it just so we can hit our Heat Wave a little more often? I guess. It's like we hit Heat Wave a little more often. Does Struggle Bug have an accuracy check? That I don't know. Like, I don't think it's 100% accurate, but I don't think it's, like, any worse than anything else. Uh, also has Rage Powder, which is super duper important to try and get your trick rooms up. Um, and specifically because this isn't focus slash, we can just literally click rage powder, get our Volcarona knocked out and still get up our trick room. And that's just fine because then you get your free switch into your Dynamax Mon. Yeah. Struggle book doesn't have a check. So I'm interested in the wide lens then. I, it has to be just to hit heat waves more often, I guess. Which, if that's the case, then cool, I guess. I think I'd rather have, like, Koba Berry? Or not, uh, Colbur Berry is Rock Berry? Charty Berry is Rock Berry. That one. Colbur is Water? I don't know. Let's find out. I think Colbur's Dark. Can you cooperate with me, please? They're talking to your phone. Yep. I think Colbert's the dark berry. I'm not sure. Uh, but Struggle Bug, Heat Wave, Protect, Rage Powder. Uh, pretty fast. And then HP and Special Attack Split. Uh, I'm not sure why this Wide Lens is on here. Um, maybe we'll find out more after the episode goes, after the tour, uh, team creator go tell, can tell us more about it. Um, it is dark. Hey, well, look at that. I think what I've run Colbert Berry on here lately. Probably a Gotharita or Gothatel or a Jellicent or... I think it was Alakazam and it just wasn't good. <laughs> hey, no. um, but yeah, we'll see. we might be able to figure out more, more about this Volcarona set um, after the episode goes live and all that nonsense. And that's, that's actually one of the really good things about doing this the way we do. is like we get a lot of... I, I get a lot of messages, so I'm assuming you do too, about... Hey, I just wanted to clear some air. This is what this is doing. Yeah. And, you know, like, it helps me clear up the air. And, like, if they post it on the Discord, it also helps, like, anyone who listens to the episode that's on the Discord, which if you're not, I highly recommend it. Um, it helps them understand, hey, this is the idea behind this, just so that everyone understands. Yeah. Like, last week when we were talking about the Intimidate cycle, um, Slacking came up to us and was like, hey, um... I actually started using a flying one like you all recommended before I even heard the episode. So, you, you know, it's just like, all right, cool. You know, I, I kind of feel validated because, like, the guy who's doing this, like, had the same instinct that we did. So it's like, cool. I think I know what I'm talking about once in a while. <laughs> Validation <laughs> is good. Um, but, yeah, once we know more about this Wide Lens Volcarona set, we'll be able to understand what it's doing. Um, if it isn't supposed to be Wide Lens, then it's just like, was Wide Lens just for, like, the meme factor of it, then we might be able to, if we put Vest on Blastoise, we could probably, like, throw Life Orb on Volcarona. I don't know if we need Life Orb, though. That's the thing. We're not doing any Quiver Dance things. Yeah, so, Quiver Dance just, unfortunately, isn't good. Why? Like, f specifically for doubles. Uh, specifically on Mons that can't take a hit. Yeah. That's the big kicker, is, like... Volcarona has a ton of weaknesses, all of which are really widely played. So, a combination of it being frail and having a ton of weaknesses means setting up is way harder. Yeah. Because, like, in the event you have a Volcarona on the other side, like, yeah, you can fear the Quiver Dance and just double into it, and, well, if they clicked it, cool. If they clicked Rage Powder, well, you're already killing it anyway, so what's the point, you know? And then it feels really bad if it just hit Protect. And, like, if you don't double into it, and it is Quiver Dance, then they have Focus Sash, and then you just get played like a fiddle. Yep. Uh, and then, like we said, Urshifu, Focus Sash, Max Attack, Max Speed, Dark, 
single strike, whatever you want to call it. Wake a blow, close combat, sucker punch, attack, pretty standard Urshiku at this point. This is the exact set I played this week for Draft League. Uh, it's the exact set that everyone plays for every Urshifu. <laughs> pretty much That's ever. not inaccurate. Uh, the only ones that gets weird is the one that was in the, was supposedly in the mono water team. That isn't mono water because it's the dark Urshifu. They lied to us. They lied to us. The mono water isn't mono water. It's basically almost on... Uh, 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 I can't talk. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to just like cut that part out so it makes it sound like nope, I'm not nope, in. Nope, nope, <laughs> uh, So, Little Root Rumble, like we said, happened this past this past Saturday. Um, Chasing Owl musical, well, it happened two Saturdays ago now. Uh, Chasing Owl was first, I was second, Jiggly was third, Matt was fourth. Evan's fifth, after having a real rough early or early two rounds, he kind of picked it up and brought it back into fifth. Uh, Polo Griff was sixth. Haribo, with his coaching Riolu set, was seventh. And then Mafia uh, rounded out the bottom at 0-5, playing a uh, kind of a, like a quash Cinderace kind of thing. So, looking at... Uh, th- so, I'm assuming we're going to go over all these anyway. So okay, we're starting at the bottom, work our way up here. Sure, looks looks good to me. Uh, looking specifically at the Sableye Cinderace, Togekiss, Milotic, Rillaboom, Dusclops. You played in this. Talk, um, talk me through this one. So the whole point here was to make sure that Cinderace got to go off first and got to do its thing unimpeded. Sableye at Quash. Um, I have the matches recorded. I downloaded the VOD from Twitch, and I have them up, and we might go over them for a video later on down the road. Oh, did uh, you stream? Neat. I streamed it, yeah. Uh, so the goal here was Cinderace needs to do its thing. Save like, speed control, Togekiss, redirection, Rillaboom, fake out, to, and, and it's just, like, grass coverage because you have Milotic as your, like, grass water fire core, and then Dusclops is, like, a bulky anti-trick room in this situation because you don't really need the trick room center. So this is a hard Cinderace team. Yeah, this is okay. This is all about using Cinderace to its full advantage. Um, it it was okay. It didn't do well in our tournament mainly because there was a lot of redirection and like speed control on other sides as well. Um, I think I played Mafia round one. I think I, I, I yeah I played Mafia round one. And I think we went to three games, if I can't remember correctly. Don't don't worry, I'll get the video up eventually. I'll have to go through and edit and copy, cut and paste, because I did a lot of uh, commentating over other people's games as well. <laughs> like, every time I had a downtime, I went to go jump to another match. <laughs> and I commentated their match for, for the time that it was done. And then I went to go play mine if I had to go play mine. Uh, but um, the team was cool. Uh, it just wasn't suited well for the rest of the format that he played against. Um, uh, the next team here was coaching Riolu, which we had talked about real early on before, I think it was about a week or two before this, this event, uh, how Cinderace Riolu isn't as good as everyone thinks it is. So the, um, the week we got information, I think it was release weekend, um, we found out that what coaching actually did. And I, I asked the question, I'm like, I wonder if there's a prankster mod that gets access to this. And I got a ton of responses of, oh, hey, by the way, Riolu does. I'm like, oh, okay, that's kind of cool, I guess. And, like, I've seen this team a lot. Specifically, Riolu, Cinderace, Snorlax. Yep. And then, like, rounding out with Lapras, Combe, Rillaboom, or... I've seen I've seen Gudra in that last slot, too. Let's say Watermon or Dragonmon that benefits from Comfe priority yeah. triggering with this policy. I've, I've seen that. I've also, like, I've seen um, Weakness Policy, Comfe, Gudra stuff. I've also seen, like, specifically Gudra Riolu and have it be a physical variant of Gudra. And then you have Sap Sipper off for <laughs> triggers from Comfe as well. Yep. And, like, that's really cool. The downside is, is, like, I don't think this team stands up on its own. Um, I think either James Beck or uh, Aaron Zhang played this team recently. Mm-hmm. And so, like, I I can't remember. It was one of those two. I'm 99% sure. 
Um, might have been Wolfie. Someone, 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 played, someone somewhere played this team, and I watched videos on it. <laughs> and so, like, I've seen this team played, and it's it's cool. When it does this thing, it's very good. And, like, majority of your games that you win with this team are because your opponent incorrectly led against Cinderace, and you just swept them. Yeah. Like, Riolu just... It's not good. It it has all my friends are dead syndrome. Uh, the problem with this team is two of those mons have that problem. Comfey and Riolu both have that issue. And so, like, then you're reliant on four mons to do something when, you know, potentially half of the mons that you're bringing don't do anything. Yeah. Uh, there was a game, I think it was game two, you had that problem. It was just Riolu, Comfey, and it's just like, okay, well, what do you do now? This is all you got left. What do you do? Um, I played against Karibo. Karibo was my last opponent. Uh, I got paired down because I played Jiggly already, and I went. We were both three two at that point. Uh, we were both three one at that point. So I got paired down against Karibo, and I got and then I won against him. Uh, Parish song, Parish trap, essentially, like get him down to two mods, throw out Toad, throw out Toad. Toad sets up Parish song. Came to from there. Usually, I, I I think I did that three or four times, and that's People how I don't expect it. That's how I won a lot of my games. Was just like, okay, here's Parish Song, or here's the threat of Parish Song, so they have to focus down Toad. So after game, like after I did game one, someone had to focus down Toad for game two, and it's like, okay, just take like, it out. All right, cool. Okay, you're, the Scavenger's on the other side here. You're targeting my support mine. Cool. <laughs> yeah, and the Scavenger just blows you up. Um, Polgriff was next up here. Uh, this this team is really really cool. Okay, so, walk walk me through this one because this so one looks all over the place. Shadow support with uh with actual with access to high jump kick, uh, fake out, does coaching does a lot of cool things. Okay, uh, I, I assumed it was coaching, like coaching support. It was really cool watching the music, um, because it had a lot of things that could happen, like it could do at a time. Like I'm assuming really it's knew. it's sash. Uh, yes. Okay. So I'm assuming this is like fake out, coaching, high jump kick, protect? Something like that. Yeah. Okay. I don't remember what the fourth move was off the top of my head. It might be helping hand. It could be helping hand. Like, if it's helping hand, though, like, helping hand. Like I said, we'll go through it. Yeah, I'll have to yeah. go through and watch the video again. Uh, T-Tar, uh, one of those mons that actually benefits from coaching a lot. It really, yeah. really likes it. Um, it also, T-Tar pairs exceptionally well with Dusclops. Because we have weakness policy, we have bulldoze. And lash out. And lash out, which hits extremely yeah. hard. Oh yeah, super hard. So like those those three together is just like, alright, cool, this is a pretty solid core already. Yeah. Like, and then you're adding in Durant, which again benefits really well from coaching. And like is a really prime Dynamax target. Yep. Along with like Tyranitar, but like Tyranitar is good on its own. Like, Durant feels like it needs Dynamax to be good, though. Otherwise, you're, like, reliant on hitting. And I, I've played that lottery before. It's not a fun lottery to play. Yeah! Um, Durant was interesting. It had Thunder Fang. I'm not going to lie. I didn't know it got Thunder it, Fang. Whatever, thunder, whatever electric move it had, it had it. Bang. It, it maxed Lightning at least twice from what I saw on uh, during commentary. Um, so that was super duper cool. Let's. I, I'm pulling up Showdown just It has to, see. to be Thunder Fang. If it's not, I'm going to be highly disappointed. Like Thunder Fang or something. That has to be it. Um, Incineroar does Incineroar things really well. Azumarill was actually a problem for me when I played against it. Uh, if I didn't have P2 sitting on the other side, I was able to deal with the Azumarill very well. Uh, I was definitely going to lose most of my games. Uh, Porygon 2. My Porygon 2 was a god. Let's just go with that. If I could get a Hax, I could. If I could survive it, I would. <laughs> Por my Porygon 2 set was very, very strong. What? Durant gets Thunder Wave. Huh. But yeah, it's Thunder Fang. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> why, why on God's Green Earth does this thing get Thunder Wave? I don't know. Because uh, it's a steel type, probably. Um, Evan's team... Okay, Evan's team was really, really cool. It is a hard Trick Room team, for the most part, because Steelix and Lurantis are both really slow. Incineroar is a great Trick Room support. Mimikyu is the setter, along with Meowstic. Meowstic is another setter. Okay. Uh, Lurantis, contrary, plus Tickle off of Meowstic, 
means you can tickle, go plus one, it's, superpower. It's basically coaching at that point. Buff again. But, like you mentioned in the pre-show, it's just like, tickle lets you target down your opponent's mon. So it's like, this is real, uh, this is real loop, but way better. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's real loop, but you get... You can actually do things outside of just buff your buff your teammate. Uh, it also Meowstic gets fake tears, which plus twos the special defense That's of cute. Lurantis, which is super duper cute. Um, Evan, Evan is just like on some next level, just like mind the teams games. are fun. The teams yeah, are fun. Like, um, and like I said, it did not do well early. It had a real hard time against Polygriff, um, and then it had a real hard time against Jiggly, and I think he went O two real early. Um, and then you kind of pick it up from there. I'm assuming this is Sheer Force Steelix. I'm assuming so. It's either that or Rocket, probably. Which, um, who was it? There was, it was your match last week in Draft League. Uh, the Alola Whack was not Lightning Rod. It was, uh... Rocket. It was Rocket. And it Flare Blitz. I'm like, oh, that does a ton. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then, like I said, Incineroar does Trick Room, does Trick Room support style. Mimikyu does Mimikyu things. Uh, Matt's team, I didn't play against Matt. Um, I didn't really see his team play that much. I tried to find him a lot of the time, but a lot of the time either I was still playing or the match was already done. Blastoise, Incineroar, Comfey, which I'm assuming is Giga Drain to trigger a weakness policy on this Blastoise, uh, or yes. it could be Draining Kiss to trigger uh, Dragon Ball. Policy on Dragon Ball, yeah. And then Rillaboom and Corviknight as its steel type to finish off that fair. Wait, I'm just, I'm just saying... Policy Blastoise is something I can get behind. Right? That's adorable. That's something you don't think about now. Uh, because we have Giga Drain off of this Comfey, we have access to water, like like doing water ones. Doing water, bulky, bulky water with a weakness policy. You could like weakness policy Milotic. You could weakness policy Blastoise in this situation. Lapras is much easier to trigger now. Mm-hmm. Without having to like fight with like a Volt Switch. And, like, Lapras is really interesting because it also has shell armor, so, like, Urshifu, like, doesn't really do anything to it. It doesn't crit it. It still hurts. Well, yeah, it, it I mean, it's, it, yeah, you're, you're still going to take a close combat and be sad. But you also have Water Absorb, so, like, you can pair it with Alolan Raichu and just click Surf. And, like, then you get this free heal while also damaging both of their mons, which is also extremely cute. So, Lapras, Lapras is one of those mons I think is kind of underplayed right now if you want me to be honest but like the big problem is this monkey sized problem in the room that just Real beats boom. it up <laughs> yep real boom it does does cause problems um having access to grassy glide maybe and being able to set up your own terrain at the same time is causes a lot of problems for all these bulky waters you have to actually have extra defense bulk invested in uh jiggly place third uh klefki teleon Venusaur, Torkoal, P2, and Togekiss as his team here. Uh, is this Sniper Inteleon? Uh, I believe it was a Sniper Inteleon, yes. Interesting. Um, we also had Soak to abuse with Venusaur. <laughs> so we can Solar Beam people? So we can oh, Max oh, Vine yeah. Oh yeah, duh. That one. Um, P2 was a good trick room setter to pair with Torkoal in this situation because we didn't have anything that really cared about Bulldoze. Interesting uh, Interesting note about Soak. Um, you can soak their grass type to get rid of it so, like, Vine Lash actually hurts them. Yep. And not, like, eat up Vine Lash in that slot. Yep. That's that's super cute. Uh, and then Klefki was Thunder Wave Prankster support. It's pretty much the speed control on that team. Outside of Trick Room. Outside of P2. P2. Uh, and now this is where we get into the fun stuff because Rain went 1 and 2. Like we did not, I did not expect to see a rain like a rain team, let alone pretty much a mirror. <laughs> when I brought my team, when how early into the I tournament? played him round three. Okay, so we were undefeated. Both we were both two zero when we met up, but we were the only undefeated pretty much left. You're like oh, um, rain just like you know the Spider Man meme of Pope pointing at each other. <laughs> um, rain mirrors are hard. <laughs> Rain moves are real hard, and if you don't if you don't expect correctly, uh, you definitely can have problems. Um, Amoongus was much better, and there is much better for the mirror, just in general. Oh, I'm sure. Uh, because it just be it's another mod that benefits from having rain set up, um, and it also just like pairs well against rain. Yeah, 
Like, you can reasonably deal with the Politoed. You can put the Kindred to sleep, and it's just like, all right, cool, that lines up really well. So, uh, it ended up being a 2-0 by him in the mirror just because game one... Game one was a long was was a long one, and then game two, uh, my cop was kind of just like my brain was just taxed, so I just sent out what I like expected him to play, like what it was good uh, from against what I expected, and he didn't bring any of it. So oh, awkward. Uh, game one, I didn't bring Polytoad at all. <laughs> uh, so it's just like I don't have a rain setter, and neither did he. <laughs> oh, our rain setter is Kingdra. Yeah. Uh, Escavalier was the heavy lifter for both of our teams. Escavalier does a lot in the mirror, and if they, if like their Marowak was better paired up against my Escavalier than my Incineroar was for theirs. Interesting. Because I had Burning Jealousy instead of Flippers. Yeah, that'll, um, that'll definitely do but it. But I also had the potential to get an automatic burn if they didn't KO Incineroar immediately, which was super duper good. Um, but that never lined up. That line never lined up. Um, I will say, Porygon 2 was, like, the carry in the last, like, half of the game. Porygon 2 and Politoed are just such a great late-game pair. I, I can't explain why this works. Porygon 2 hit a freeze and two paralysis uh, against Karibo in my last round. Oh, my lord. It survived... <laughs> Rillaboom Grassy Glides. It survived three Grassy Glides. Good lord. To take it out with Ice Beam. Take out Posing Rillaboom with Ice Beam. So, Porygon 2 is... I've said it before, I'm going to keep saying it. It's the best EV Light user in the game. Oh, for sure. Uh, everyone who says, oh, Dust Claps is great, they're lying to you. Porygon 2 can carry Shadow Ball and can easily deal with the Dust Claps, whereas Dust Claps kind of just sits there and looks at you funny because it either has Bulldoze or Nightshade. And neither of which are doing with the Porygon. Um, so P2 is definitely by far the better EV like carrier at the moment. Um, we ended up with three Porygon 2s in our, tree, in our in our event, and they were all in the top three at the end of the day. Interesting. Uh, so I it definitely, definitely carried that. the day there. Um, whereas we had two Dusclopses, and they were both in the bottom. So statistically, it's proven that P2 is better. Yeah, in this small... I have data supporting it. In this very small data pool, yes. <laughs> hey, if I've learned anything, size of data pools don't really matter. Oh, um, true. So... <laughs> That's the complete opposite of how that works, but... Yeah. So looking at each of our teams here for the top two here, um, I, know, I know we talked about my team last week, so we're just going to focus on Chasing's team this week, and I can tell you the differences between ours. Okay, um, do your thing. So, I didn't have Megahorn on my Escavalier. I specifically ran Felstinger because Felstinger gives me plus three outside of Dynamax. And plus three attack when you're not Dynamaxed is a lot. Oh, it's a ton. Um, outside of that, everything else is the same. Pretty much the spreads are the same. I had a little bit more special defense investment in mine than he did. Uh, but that's just because I didn't want to die to all the fire type attacks, if there were any. Um... Kingdra, uh, they were running Muddy Water. I was running Hydro Pump. It's literally a preference. You could, They both miss just about as often. Uh, muddy Water is spread. Hydro Pump is just single target, so it comes down to you. Uh, Politoed, our Politoed's are completely different. Well, for the most part. Their Politoed was a fast support, whereas mine was a slow Parish Song. Mm -hmm. uh, they did Citrus Berry and then Calm, Max Special Defense, Max HP... Uh, protect Muddy Water Helping Hand Haze, where I had Parish Song in that last slot, uh, and I was super duper slow, and I was more defensively set up to beat. Uh, really you had Iron Ball. Yep. Okay. Yep. Thirty three. We had a thirty three. That's a. That's real, that's a real slow poly. That's real slow. Uh, Is poor, there shiny min speed? No. Oh. No. Disappointing. I've, yeah, I went and hatched a zero speed zero attack one for specifically ladder play. Yeah, but it's not shiny, so, like, it doesn't mean anything. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> uh, no, they are. the only other shiny on the team is Kingdra anyway, so. Exactly. You can't have one without the other. I'll be fine. <laughs> uh, if anything, I do need to get a zero attack Kingdra for ladder, so. I might have one. Um, I have a bunch of horsies. Porygon to pretty much the exact same, like, attack spread. Recover, Trick Room, Ice Beam, Thunderbolt. 
uh, EV Lite download. The difference was HP, like our spreads themselves. Uh, the HP spread on his is, it's like 244, then 12 special attack, and then 252 special defense. I don't think you need that special attack. Um, it, it can be relevant in certain situations. Mine was more so like set up to be super bulk against a lot of different things. Uh, I had max HP and then 156 defense and 100 special defense. So my special defense was less, but I can take a fighting type attack for. I'm going to be able to take that close combat from a scavenger. I'll be able to take close combat from Urshifu. Mm-hmm. I actually could actually hit the, the, take the damage here and survive it, which that was super duper important in, in my opinion to be able to do that. Um, and then Alolan Marowak here is their fighting type, whereas I was running Incineroar with safety goggles. They were running Marowak. Uh, detect Flare Blitz, Poltergeist, Boomerang, Lightning Rod. Max HP, max attack, four special defense, which actually is suboptimal. You don't need max attack to KO everything you need to KO. Just put the extra points in special defense because you need to be able to survive those water type moves. And then lastly, here's Amoongus. Uh, Regenerator, Focus Sash. Uh, I was running Togekiss in this slot with uh, Serene Grace and Babiri Ray. Uh, max HP, 4 defense, max special defense. So pretty pretty bulky Amoongus trying to survive all of those special fire type attacks coming out. Spore, Rage Powder, Pollen, Puff, Giga Drain. So no protect on this Amoongus at all. I think that's fine. Yep. I, don't, I don't think I won't protect here, but... It... I could see it over Giga Drain. Uh, if you were running Black Sludge, you probably want Protect. Yeah. If you're running Focus Sash, you don't really need it. Uh, so, yeah. So that's the kind of, like, differences between our team. Um, like, three mods are pretty close to the same, with Porygon 2 being exactly the same. And then Polytoad was a completely different set, and then their Fire and their Redirection mods were different as well. So, uh, looking at the... Kingdra. Kingdra was exactly the same? Uh, the only difference was this Muddy Water, it was a Hydro Pump. Okay. Otherwise, the set was exactly the same. I'm pretty sure you said that, but yep. I was yawning, so I didn't hear you. And then, <laughs> and then Escavalier, Beggarhorn versus Felstinger. Yep, that, that one I heard. So, yeah, that was kind of like the rundown of that event, and we hope to do more in the future with sure. prize support next time. Yeah, if we if we hit enough people, I'm all for it. So yeah, uh, you ready to talk about these players' cup numbers? Because I even let's do this data thing, is man. great. I love data. Uh, I so love th- that a company is actually willing to give us give, data. give us data. Yeah. So if you've been living under a rock, uh, players' cup has started. It's been the regional like qualifiers were done in May. Now we're getting down into from the two fifty six, the top sixty four, and now we're getting down from the top sixty four to whatever we're trying to get down to. I think it's eight from here. So I couldn't tell you, man. I, I don't know. I could not actually tell you how this how They this had works. to play so many games, and then they play more games, and then the finals are here at the end, middle of August, I think, or something like that. Uh, so percentage, we got all these percentage of Pokemon used. There's about, I think there's about 25 here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 1, 12. Thirty-seven mods here. Cool. So let's just rock and roll. Okay. So number one mod here, no surprise, Rillaboom. Um, Interestingly, dropped from week one to week two. Uh, probably because a lot of, like, like we saw, we see Incineroar spiked here as mm-hmm. well. So that's probably why Incineroar is actually a great <laughs> Rillaboom counter. Uh, even though Rillaboom gets high horsepower, Incineroar kind of just okos you. Um, and usually Incineroar has better support around it than Rillaboom does. Rillaboom is expected to stand out on its own, whereas Incineroar usually has a backup and can easily deal with it. Uh, from 49 to 46, it looks like, percent, which still is really high. 46, I mean, that's basically every other team. Yeah. That's insane. Uh, Uh, and, like, looking at that same number, like, Cinderace, I mean, uh, Togekiss and... Uh, and Zenoror are both over 40% as well, at 43 and, and 42. 42. Uh, but notably, they also are trending upward this week at plus 2 and plus 5% respectively. So yeah. it, it makes sense that, hey, the three best Mons are the three most played. Yeah. It, it legitimately doesn't surprise me that these three are the best. Also, it's like they can all be played on the same team. 
That's yeah. the next part is they all can be played together. It's not like they have a shame type and there's just like the same typing so you don't want to play them together. Uh, in Sinur going up 5% is super significant here. Going from whatever uh, 37% to 42%. That's going from like one in every, and almost three teams, like one in, every, in three, to almost every other. Mm-hmm. That's insane. And like, then we have this huge, like, drop Oh, there's off. a huge gap between three and four. Uh, so we go from 42% with Incineroar to 28%. With Titar. Which, again, makes sense. Tyrantar is really good. It, yep. I mean, I see it probably one in four matches. Th- these numbers seem to line up to me. Yeah. Uh, it's trending upward at five five percent increase from last week, uh, so went from twenty three to twenty eight, uh, which again not too, not terribly surprising. Titar is a really good mod; it pairs well with both Rillaboom and Incineroar and Togekiss, so it's not surprising to see that it trick it tended to go upward. Um, going down next again is twenty three percent is Cinderace and Ragapult are both like these mods are usually the. Fast sweeper mods, you yep. see, and that's that's exactly what these are. Like, uh, these are these are mods that punish your opponent's lead. Yep. If if you don't have an answer to them, they take over the game by themselves. Usually notably, fairly easy. And notably, they are also both trending upward. So it's interesting to see if that that growth continues, or you know, if they have a stagnant week this week, or what what actually happens to to these mods? Because I like looking at this list. These are the mods that stick out to me the most Mm -hmm. as, I think, underplayed for where they are. I had heard an interesting statistic that uh, that Cinderace is maybe trending upward this week, but it actually did not make top cut in any player's cup. Interesting. Uh, We'll have to wait for more data from Pokemon, the Pokemon company, to actually get that confirmed, but I have heard rumblings on the internet that Cinderace actually just, like, took a nosedive after trending up week two that these week three matches, it just dropped. Because people are more prepared for it. Yeah. And, and, that's, and that's, that's what happened. That's the thing. It's like, yeah, more people can bring it, but it's also been an extra week. People have more experience playing against it. People know, they know what, what their they, team... They know how their team works. Better. Yeah. They, they know what to do against it with their team. Uh, next up, Amoongus up 5% from last week from 15% to 20%. Uh, that's a big jump for Amoongus. That, that is a big jump. That's going from about 1 in, like, 8 to 1 in 5. That is huge. Um, Amoongus being a very good redirection redirection mod. Not as good as Togekiss, since Togekiss is the counter, kind of. Being able to run safety goggles on your Togekiss and be able to follow me and always draw those spores away from Amoongus and eat all of those all the time is really important. Um, whereas Amoongus can't really do that to Togekiss. So the this next group, I kind of just want to clump together. Uh, at 18 and 17%, we have Ndidi Female, which I'm assuming doesn't... Uh, is it all Ndidi's or just Ndidi That's just Ndidi Female. Okay. Uh, Torkoal and P2. Yep. And then at 17%, we have Venusaur and, and Dusclops. Dusclops. So is- this, again, just kind of makes sense. Like... The, the growth of Psychic, psychic Spam has kind of fallen off the face of the Earth. So, like, it makes sense that Ndidi is still played, but not as widely as it was, you know, a month ago or whatever at this point. And it's interesting to see the growth of Sun again, and specifically, like, Sun Rune, which I, I believe uh, Aaron Zhang played last week, actually. Mm-hmm. And, like, that may be a part of this. Like, yeah. when, when you have those big influencers... Or big PokeTubers or whoever playing these teams, people start playing them. Yeah. Like there, there was a video last week where uh, I think the three matches he played, he's like, "Oh, hey, we just featured this team. Oh, hey, this is the team we played last week. This is the team we're playing right now." You know? Yeah, there like, was a video. It was, it was <laughs> it's like, today or yesterday. This is like exact same carbon copy of the team. Um, he's like. Cool. I know how to play against this because I know exactly what items wear and everything. I know else. exactly what this team's doing. Yeah. yeah. So it, it's interesting to see that both P two and Dusclops are both t- trending upward, and that uh, Venusaur and Torkoal are also trending upward together. Yep. Notably, there's more Torkoals than there are Venusaurs. Not by much. Yeah. Seventeen exactly. to eighteen percent is not a big metric, whereas like eighteen to twenty is 
about five to ten, probably seventeen to eighteen is probably a couple. And then rounding out this second column, like starting starting off this second column, we have uh, dark dark Urshifu up four uh, up four percent to fifteen percent. Uh, I'm not surprised that it's going upwards because, like, like I said, Titar's popular, so it's probably popular. It's also a good counter to Incineroar, yep. having those fighting type moves. Uh, but I would expect Urshifu being a legendary to have more probably. You, think, you know, and that's, think that's more the people thing. Play in this mod, but and that's not. that's the thing is you know when we heard oh my gosh this ability is insane and like it's gonna have a Gigantamax form and it always crits and you know like me and you were worried about this thing when it first came out and then we, we, got the we stat really and then it just and it's just like oh yeah this is just whatever just like, blow it sure, off whatever. but now it's 15 percent. it's that's about a one and like i said one in eight teams you know and then she- after after it came out and like we played a lot against it it was just like this thing's not as good as people are giving like as people mm-hmm. are thinking you it have is. to stick this focus with focus stats on this thing a and soul fest is not good that's the thing is it's it's stats are just not supportive enough to be Anything other than Focus Sesh. Yeah. Because if it's not, it just gets O-Code. Yeah. Like, it has to be Focus Sesh. Otherwise, it dies to a fairy-covered ham sandwich. <laughs> yeah. It, it, well, it could take other hits. You know, so, uh, this week in Draft League, I played EB. Yep. And game two, I led, um, Urshifu Cloister. Mm-hmm. They faked out into my Urshifu, which I Dynamaxed. Because I expected to fake out into the Cloister, which would then let them set up uh, Aurora Veil with Ninetales. So they led uh, Torcat, Ninetales. I went for Rock Blast into the Ninetales to KO it. I went for a Max Knuckle into the Torcat to get back to, to even on both my mods. Um, Urshifu hits really hard. Yeah. The downside is, it's like... The Blizzard on turn two from Ninetales did, like, 45 to 50%, and I was Dynamaxed. <laughs> it's like, oh! <laughs> like, what? Oh. <laughs> and then, like, that's a Blizzard. You know, that's, that's a spread move, you know? Like, yeah. <laughs> like, this thing has no defenses. No. Um, so yeah, Urshifu up 4% from last week to 15%. Uh, next up here, uh, we start getting the trending down mons again. Uh, Primarina down 2%, Alexandrill up 2%, and then Lapras apparently wasn't even on this board. Uh, it also could be stagnant. Or, yeah, it could be. It, 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 Which means that it didn't drop any, or it's just yeah, dropped exactly enough. I think exactly that's what enough. that means, because like, if it wasn't on the list, they would still have a growth percent for it. You, you should, yeah. Either, you, you either, it didn't, either it didn't move and enough of them got cut off that it stayed the same, which to me because sounds like, very looking, surprising. Looking at the mons down here at the bottom, like, you have Magnezone that's up 4% and is at 6%. So, like, clearly they have the data to say, hey, there was 2% of Magnezones last week. Yeah. So that, that tells me that Lapras was at 13% last week. So we had just enough cut out of the bulk of, this, of the event to where Lapras stayed the same. Yeah. Now, that is what that says to me. Uh, notably, Primarina being down 2%. Primarina is usually the mon you see with Paired Rillo, with... Boob, and Sonora. Yeah. Notably, though, like, if you want that fairy coverage, you just have Togekiss, too. So, I, I don't think you want that double fairy weakness when, like, it, I, I guess it kind of doesn't line up particularly, sp- specifically Primarina doesn't line up particularly well against Rillo, Boom, which yeah. could also be a reason it's trending downward, because... Really, boom just hits really hard, man, and it can hold like fourteen different items, and all of them are viable. And like, if Venusaur is popular too, then Primarina is going to trend downwards as well. Yep. Yeah. So it's it's all of these offensive grass types that make your bulky waters bad. Yeah. Which is why, like, when was the last time you saw a Milotic? Uh, down here at six percent. Oh, I actually didn't even see it. <laughs> see, it's behind the mic, so I didn't actually see it. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so Lapras being thirteen percent of all on all team of all, all teams here is that made week two is kind of cool. Uh, we were talking about how Lapras last week wasn't like really really set up for this meta, having Rillaboom and all these new electric types that are actually decent in the game. 
uh, and PZ being able to just max lightning you to death. Uh, so having Lapras in pretty much one of all one in one in ten teams, we could we could say it's like an easy round there. Um, is is nice to see. Uh, next up, we have we'll just lump these these next two together because it pretty much is in the one in ten range as well. Arcanine and then Talonflame and Hatterene are all in the eleven to ten percent, which is again one in ten teams. Uh, Hattering going down where the other two are going up. Talonflame, another mod that I don't, I never expected to actually do well. And, dude, again, it's like, I've seen a lot of Talonflame, and I don't think it's particularly good, especially in the face of Rillaboom. Yeah. Like, if it's Sash, just clap them. Okay, now they don't have priority, and they you don't go have priority, Sash. They don't get to do anything. <laughs> like, okay, what, do you, what, what are you doing? Me. Like... So honestly, I think what would make Talonflame playable is they gave us Gen Six Gale Wings. If they did that, I think this thing would be insane. Oh yeah! But I am so glad they don't because, <laughs> like, I'm not saying Talonflame was absurd back then because I didn't play then. Yeah. But like, I can't imagine it was fun. No. Like I can't imagine Talonflame was fun to play against then. So here's a weird metric. Hattery went down and DD Female went up. These two are normally paired together. How the heck did this happen? Another one that's really weird is Porygon Z went down and Clefairy went up. But they're in the same bar. That's, yeah, weird. Is, that's the weird thing. It's like, who is playing PZ with that Clefairy? Probably someone <laughs> playing with Togekiss. Yeah, probably. I mean, that would be. I tried sense. it. I tried it. It was fine. I just like Clefairy more for after you. Yeah. yeah. It's a better. It has a better anti trick room tech, all unwrapped in one mod. But yeah, like, it, it, going back to your thing of, like, NDD Hattering, like, that's your spy spam. So it, it's weird to see. One go up and one go down. One went significantly up and one went down. A little bit. Yeah. I mean, a downward trend is a downward trend. Um. That means that there were more NDDs by themselves without Hattery, probably paired with PZ, uh, P2 or PZ or Dusclops. Notably, though, you also have NDD to be able to counter Rillaboom's terrain. Yeah. Like, that that in and of itself can also be a reason to have NDD trending upward. So, um, moving on here to the 9 percenters. Like we said, PZ, Clefairy, and then Corviknight up 2%. Freaking Whimsicott down 7%. I'm pretty sure that's the largest drop-off. I'm uh, pretty sure that's the largest, like, percentage That's move. the largest percent change, period. Like, man. 7%. Like, that's a ton, dude. You went from being 16 Like, 1 in 8 teams. to 1 in 10. Yeah. That's insane. So, why? That's, that's the big question here is, Why? Talonflame is a hard counter to Whimsicott. I know that one for a fact. Dual Wing Beat will KO Whimsicott every time. Oh, um, I mean, yeah, you just don't have defense. Like, Amoongus can Sludge Bomb Whimsicott, and then the other mod just gets a, tail, a Trick Room, so you just Tailwind's useless. If Amoongus is good, Whimsicott's usually not good. Uh, same thing with Fairy, same thing with Incineroar. Uh, you can't, like, like Incineroar is just going to run into you and just blow you up anyway. Uh, Cinderace, again, another mod that's just like, oh, that's a Whimsicott, heh, <laughs> bye. Um, Venusaur, again, another mod that Whimsicott can't really redirect or do anything against, and it just eats a Sledge Bomb and goes down. Uh, Lapras, another mod that kind of beats up on Whimsicott. Arcanine, another mod that beats up on Whimsicott. Dragapult. There's a lot of the top mods, like... Rillaboom has Fake Out. There's two mods that have Fake Out in the top three, and both and Whimsicott hates both of them. Yeah. So it's not it's not pretty. Being a, going down seven percent, going from sixteen to nine is a real big drop. But I can see why it happened. Oh, exactly. Rillaboom I, and, and Cinderor yeah. and Cinderace and when Venusaur. you have when you have tough matchups trending upward, it's going to get harder for you. Yeah. Uh. 8% here is Gyarados and Rotom Wash, both going up. Gyarados is up 1%, Rotom Wash is up 3%. Notably, this is something uh, we were theorycrafting on Discord this week, is Gyarados. 
Gyarados as a counter to not only Rillaboom, but also Incineroar and Cinderace. Yep. It's so like, okay, sure. And this is, you know, you, you tag me like, hey, they're talking Cin- they're talking Gyarados, do your thing. Go go be, go, go be, so, go be the Gyarados nerd. Like, all right, cool, this is this is where I shine. Just like, all right, Moxie Dose, where, where are we at? <laughs> so, like, then we start doing calcs. It's like, all right, if we're mad, adamant with Life Orb, we Oko Cinderace without being Dynamaxed. So that means Dynamaxed we definitely do. We Oko uh, Rillaboom. We Oko uh, the Incineroar. So it's just like, man, why? Why not? Yeah. Like, granted, if we're Moxie, then, like, we just get to propel ourselves forward. And this is this is an argument I was I made. It's like, if we're intimidate and we're intimidating things that we counter, then we're, our intimidate's not doing anything. Like, yeah. if we if we are able to deal with them before they are able to actually do anything, then there's no reason to have the intimidate. I'm just like, take your intimidate from from Incineroar, eat them up, get your get back to neutral, just go crazy. Yep. And like you can you compare this with something like, um, like Whimsicott if you really want because at plus two you're gonna outspeed everything. Uh, Whimsicott gets tickle so you can get those defense drops. I I don't think you get screech. I I can't. I know there's prankster mods that do, and I can't think off the top of my head who those are. I I don't know. Um, so, but like, if the, the thing about Gyarados is it needs that first KO to start going crazy. Yeah. Once it gets the KO, first KO, it gets the snowball. Yeah. Because like, then you're just putting that much more pressure on your opponent, especially if you're Dynamaxing mm-hmm. and you're max airstreaming. So you're not only raising your speed, but you're also ra- raising your attack by getting the KO. Like how good is Hyper Beam when you don't recover? And it's stab, and it gives you a dragon dance. <laughs> because that's legitimately what you're looking at from like a a max airstream from this thing. Yeah. It's like, okay, cool. Max Geyser changes the weather, so now my my next one's just gonna do more. It's yeah, like it's harder. And so Gyarados is definitely a mon that I am very interested in, and I'm excited to actually see if this pans out like I want it to. Um. Next up, we traded, we traded a percentage pretty much. Gyarados took Draco Vicious spot. Well, this is because Mister Vicious kind of falling off the face of the earth. Yeah, Mister like, Vi- Mister Vicious gets outscaled by Kingdra, which isn't on this list, but uh, which is actually people really are prepared interesting. for Kingdra in like games, so that means we're prepared for Draco Vicious games. And notably, Kingdra gets to go burr and you know just Draco Vicious. Sits there and hopes, looks hopes funny. to go for her. <laughs> <laughs> looks at you funny. Uh, like, also, Duraludon is dropped down to this tier as well. Uh, went from <laughs> one in ten to under one in ten. You know, this is this is something I'm actually surprised isn't seeing more play, just because its biggest counter in Conkeldur has fallen off the face of the earth, and like Excadrill, Excadrill is another one that's kind of like it's trending upward here. But overall, I think I've seen less Excadrills now than I have in a long time. Yeah, you see, definitely see less sand than, than what you, like you expect. Granted, the Pokemon Players Cup is a little bit more fine-tuned. It's not as, like, it doesn't have any gross view yeah, of the game. Exactly. It's not showdown ladder. Yeah. Like, you're not going to run into people playing memes here. You're, you're going to play against people that are playing to win. So having having Dureladon, um kind of going downward in in trend makes makes sense to me, but at the same time, I'm surprised it's not doing better because um, b- because like its bigger counters seem to be less prevalent than they were it, you know two months ago. Yeah. Um, looking at. Uh the rest of this one here. Here, we're going to kind of fire off these ones and then look at week one and see what's missing from week one that we don't have anymore. Uh, Water Strike, Urshifu down 1%. Bisharp up 2%. Melodic up 2%. Alola Marowak down 1%. Magnezone up 4% to actually make it as a new Pokemon into this 
Mm-hmm. We know this one. And then Poly Toad down 2% at five, in the last tier here. Uh, Charizard didn't change. Terrakion didn't change. And Conkodor went up 1% to get into the tier on this one as well. Yeah, because they, they only listed Pokemon that have a minimum of 5% playability across the board. So, Bisharp, Milotic, Magnezone, Conkodor, Conkeldor are all new into the into this chart. And uh, going look, back and looking at the week mm-hmm. 1 1. Kingdra, Azumarill were both on here, and we're both on week one. Alolawak and, also fell off. Yeah, Alolawak went down. It, we, we said that Alolawak went down 1%. Oh, oh I, I actually, I, I didn't see the Alolawak on here at all. Yeah. I, I thought it fell off. No, it just went down one. Okay. Uh, so we lost Kingdra and Azumarill. We lost Ndidi Male. And Ndidi Male. Ndidi Male just fell off entirely. Which, I mean, that could be, it, it's at 8% week one, so I mean... Dropping four percent, I mean that's it's not, that's, that's not, half its usage. Yeah, that's I mean half, that's half the teams that had it, but still. Uh, and then because Polytoad went down, I'm assuming the Kingdras that were Polytoad went down to five, so that means Kingdras probably at three. Yeah, three to four somewhere somewhere in there. In there. Um, so yeah, like notably, a lot of these bonds that there were like Raid was there. That's okay. Can you go back to that? Because it has NDD female listed at 20% there. But it also says it went up 5% to 18%. Hmm. So I may I may not be a rocket scientist, but that I'm pretty sure doesn't, that doesn't add up. Yeah, that doesn't mean go up. <laughs> so they might be clumping NDDs. To, no, because that wouldn't make sense either. That wouldn't make sense either because this would be... Uh, That'd just be 28%. Then. 28% of NDDs. So that doesn't mean it went up at all. Huh. I am confused. I'm also confused. Data's data is not consistent with what's going on. Anyway, uh, seeing I, we talk about Magnezone as a big counter to Lapras and seeing it tick up and Lapras stay stagnant and it could be and a good sign to go down is what we were talking about. Magnezone's a really good counter to the bulky water types and has he can have a lot of good protection in the in what's going on. Um. So yeah. Pokemon Players Cup uh, Day 3 is going on currently. Uh, we were watching a little bit of it earlier. There was a really long Game 1. With, with, <laughs> with a very, very pretty shiny Gastrodon. Yeah, there was a very pretty pink Gastrodon shiny and uh, a Porygon 2. Uh, there was a real cool play game, uh, Turn 1, where they had swapped their Gastrodon in and Arcanine will wisp that slot to protect it from being spored by an Amoongus. It was real clean and super duper cool to watch that happen. And notably, the Amoongus wasn't carrying a, like, it wasn't carrying Giga Drain, so it just could not answer the Gastrodon. Yeah, just couldn't touch it. And so the the Gastrodon just basically single-handedly won them that game. Yep. Like, the the play game one won them that game. Like, uh, Gastrodon not being put to sleep means that Amoongus has to actually deal with it now instead of later. And it wasn't able to. Yeah. So, really cool. Just, like, Players' Cup data will begin in week three, probably here, probably next week, this week sometime. Uh, which well, that's how weeks work. We should be. Well, we <laughs> didn't get week one until, like, five days after week two had started. Oh. So, then larger know. data is harder to compile. So I'm over here shorter data off for no reason. So we have smaller data, so it should be easier to compile numbers. Uh, and like we said, we'll see. We'll see what happens. What moves on from this last round of the Players Cup, of the whole big group stuff, and then maybe see. I think they might be able to post what teams go on to the finals. In might August. actually have individual teams to talk about next week. Maybe. Who maybe knows? we'll find out. Anything on the way out the door, man? I got a whole lot of nothing else to say. Um, no. I think we got all of it covered for the most part. Uh, there's a lot of things that I really want to talk about, but we got to it all. Um, yeah, get us out of here. All right. So if you are listening on YouTube, go ahead and hit that like button if you like what you heard. Leave a comment down below saying, I don't know, something. Give, give us a comment question of the day today, Carl. Give us I something. I don't know. Oh, come on, man. I'm putting you on the spot. Why aren't you prepared? 
because you <laughs> put me on the spot. <laughs> this is your thing, not mine. <laughs> so leave us, leave us down in the you know the comments. Leave us a question of the week for next week. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Like, and, ideas for questions like ask us questions for next week and we'll answer them on stream so uh past that if you aren't listening on youtube go ahead and make sure you go over and follow us on there um it, we we have a lot of a lot of different stuff going on over on the youtube channel right now uh, i have a let's play going up for pokemon stadium 2 we have a ton of draft league content coming out so if you actually want to watch some less than ideal series 5 teams but like unique series five teams um uh, like by all means we have all kinds of stuff going on on there so um past that we have our twitter accounts which you can follow the podcast at lr lessons myself at carter noble 25 and carl at musical underscore 33 uh carl and i both also stream on twitch from time to time uh i was back on twitch for the first time in a while. A month <laughs> last night, uh, you dragged me in to play a Gen 3 randomizer, and then we get to like six gyms in, and my emulator crashed. <laughs> we were like three hours in, and my emulator just died. Win by default. It's the best way to win. I don't know about that one. <laughs> a win is a win. Yeah, it's so, the best way to win. So, uh, Carl and I occasionally stream on Twitch. He is at Musical, and I am at Mr. Missouri 25 basically everywhere on the internet except for Twitter. Um, Which I don't know why. I, I don't know, man. I've just never actually changed it. And, like, at this point, I've, I've said this ending for basically a year and a half to two years now, so it would be weird for me to change it. <laughs> so, um... Let's see. We have Twitch. We have Discord. Come and join the Discord channel. Had a lot of new members this past We've month. We've had a lot of new members in the last month. Yeah. And it has been great. Um, I have come to the conclusion that once we once we hit 100 members on the Discord channel, um, I'm going to put up a, a survey for potential new uh, mods. Okay. At, at, least, at least one, if not two. Uh, just depending on who applies and all that. So... If you are listening and you aren't subscribed, if you aren't a member of the Discord, come on over, come hang out, and we have a lot of, a lot of fun. Uh, legitimately, it's the best part of my day almost every day. And if you are listening and are already a member of the Discord, share, share the podcast with someone and get them in there too. Like, I just want to continue growing upward and making this as much fun as possible for everyone. So, um, I think I hit everything. Unless you got anything to add, man. Nope. Okay. I think we're getting out of here. I'm gonna go steal some more cheesecake from Carl and call it a night. So have a good uh, have a good one everybody. Be back next week. Peace. <laughs>